Hello, Hackbank here, and I just wanted to say real quick, if you've been enjoying my content, please remember to subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and follow me on Twitch so you can always catch us when we're live and see more content. Also, if you are new here, welcome in, and if you're enjoying the video, please remember to like it because it helps me out a lot. I also post funny clips and other things on TikTok. All the links are in the description below, and thanks again. Now, let's get into the video. We're gonna watch the uh, creepiest Easter egg uh, video game Easter eggs. New tough video. Just came out today, I think. Right? 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 Just came out today? Yeah. So we're going to check this out. Um, and I'm going to grab a donut. I need some breakfast. Hey guys, welcome back to another hey, video. Today nice we're going to be talking about the creepiest video game Easter eggs. All right, so I know I said I was gonna wear a costume in every single video in October, but sadly, this is only the second upload in October. Overdose, if you wanna count that or not, it was just a music video. But to make up for that, in this video, I will be wearing three costumes to make up for the uploads that just didn't come out. And I know this concept of creepy video game Easter eggs has been done years in the past, but hey, this is a nostalgic video. Let's talk about some old games and let's talk about some new games. Also, I wanna show you guys this music box. So as you can see, Freddy is on it. You guys wanna hear something cool? Oh, what the hell? That's pretty crazy. So cool, am I right? And also, I have a P.O. box. I've had one for over a year now. A lot of people always ask me if I, yes, I have one. I used to do P.O. box openings on my second channel, but uh, I got too busy. But I do it in private now, in case you guys wanna send me something. Before we get into the video, I do have to say spoilers ahead. If you see a title card and it says a game you're playing and you don't want it to get spoiled, probably best to skip it. But uh, with that being said, happy Halloween, and let's get right into the video. Cuphead hidden song file. Cuphead is a run and gun arcade game released in 2017. The game follows Cuphead and his brother Mugman who lost the bet with the devil after losing a game at the devil's casino. They are then sent on a quest to repossess the souls of people in debt as payment for Cuphead's loss. The game is known not only for its 1930s rubber hose visuals, but also for being incredibly difficult. But let's talk about the hidden file. A few months after the game came out, players found an unused song file within the game files. It was titled Muse Don't Deal With The Devil Vocal 666. Now this file contains the main opening song, except it slowed about 83% down, reversed, given reverb, and a louder track of static audio. It also contains the laugh of King Dice from 29 seconds to 39 seconds, and from 42 seconds to the end of the song, the isolated vocals of Dice By begin to just repeatedly play. Let it be known that this reverse song is also played whenever- What the fuck kind of unholy shit was that? Let it be known that that was dark as fuck. That was some Biosock shit. Why didn't they use that? They should have used that. The atmosphere that created, even for just that still image, was insane. That was awesome. Where you get the bad ending, but it's not slowed down and doesn't have the creepy laughs and sound effects added on. The Damn. next thing players found was even creepier. Upon dragging the file into a spectrogram, the devil can be seen within the waves. What? These images are all taken from the fight in his first phase, his transition phase, and his second phase. Rumors quickly began circulating that this file was intended to be used as the main menu theme whenever players that downloaded a pirated version of the game would try to play. That'd Anti be cool. screens are real, and let me know if you guys would like to see a video on that, because personally I'd love to make a video on that. And these yeah. are methods that developers use in order to punish people that illegally downloaded their game. Yeah, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the last one of the games that they came out with for like 360 or maybe xbox one if you had an illegitimate copy of the game um as as the game went on you would get to a point where enemies did more and more damage and you did less and less damage 
uh, and it would it would get to a point where it was physically impossible for you to actually continue or beat the game. Um, so they'd let you play the game, but they'd make it like impossibly hard and then cap you at a point and not let you get past a certain point, which is like a pretty great way. And they'd never really addressed it to the player directly. Um, so you just got to rage about it and just think the game was impossibly hard. All methods lead up to the same thing though, not being able to gain access to the full game due to an intentional bug or glitch. Anyway, like I was saying, players began theorizing that this file was used for the pirated version of the game and even started creepy pasta stories about a supposed devil jump scare which is completely untrue. Credit to Tetra Big Gaming for his YouTube short on this as that's what led me to tell you guys this information. In this short, Tetra explains that one of his friends DM'd a Cuphead developer asking about the anti-piracy measure and if it was true or not. Is this an entirely fabricated lie? I mean, those people mentioned the weird music that has images of the devil when you run them through a spectrogram software which can even be found in the official version but is the jump scare a lie we have no piracy measures and none of us have ever heard of any jump scare perhaps someone made a mod the song was only in the file i feel like he didn't address anything creepy about the mod or about the song file having the devil like he didn't address that shit at all what the hell because it was unused. That's it. Now knowing that it's fake, it's funny reading some of these comments. When I got the pirated version, I was freaked out. King Dice's laughter really showed how creepy it is, and I was also freaked out by the bad ending menu music. That taught me to never pirate or make bad choices in video games. Yeah, Elijah, you're a fucking liar. And you're probably- <laughs> Oh my god, that's so fucking cringe. Oh, that's funny. 12 too. <laughs> the replies are pretty funny too, just calling out. Elijah for lying. Let's head on to the next one. Idle screens, Fatal Frame games. Fatal Frame, titled Zero in Japan and Project Zero in Europe and Australia, is a Japanese survival horror video game series created, published, and developed by Koi Tecmo. Debuting in 2001 with the first entry in the series for the PlayStation 2, the series consists of five main entries. The series is set in 1980s Japan, with each entry focusing on a specific location where supernatural events occur. The series draws on staple elements of Japanese horror and is noted for its frequent use of female protagonists. In the first three Fatal Frame games, leaving the game for a couple minutes will result in some very creepy idle screens subscribe oh what the hell oh what the hell That is so unnecessary. I guess that's supposed to startle you into grabbing the controller. That would probably actually work. I would low key be like, Duh! <laughs> like that is horrifying. These figures have seemingly no relevance to the story. Well, besides the fact that they're ghosts. But imagine going to get some chips at 4 a.m. Then no back shit. And seeing this shit on your screen. I'd well, freak to be the fair, fuck most out. Most people usually click pause before they go do something and maybe this is tecmo's way of telling you hey i find i don't pause in games i don't need to pause in especially if there's like a direct reason for me not to like i'm i need time to pass in the game hey don't leave our games unpaused Silent Hills PT References, Metal Gear Solid 5. Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain is a 2015 stealth game developed by Kojima Productions and published by Konami. It's the ninth installment in the Metal Gear series that was directed, written, and designed by Hideo Kojima, and it was also his final work at Konami. The year prior, in 2014, that same developer, Kojima, released Silent Hills PT exclusively on the PlayStation 4 store. PT standing for Playable Teaser, the game was a creepy and enticing new look at what was to come in the future, and don't even get me started on the beautiful trailer. Wow. Yeah. That's Norman Reedus. Yeah. The demo was in first person and involved a looping corridor which had multiple different outcomes at random times and different endings. The demo led to an immense amount of hype from the community but sadly was eventually cancelled even after being downloaded over a million times on the PlayStation Damn. Store. This was due to Kojima's departure from Konami. And I don't even want to talk about the resellers who try to sell their PlayStation 4s with PT for up to four figures just because PT is installed. Anyway, there are a ton of PT easter eggs in Metal Gear Solid 5. Probably a nod from Kojima saying his final goodbye. So let's check them out. The main antagonist from PT known as Lisa was planned to be used as a decoy to distract enemies as seen in this 2014 demo footage, but was never used in the final game. Oh, what? 
That's pretty fucking cool. There's also a bunch of reused assets such as sound effects, but the most intriguing ones are the radio transmissions. Six-year-old daughter has the good sense to hide in the bathroom, but reports suggest he lured her out by telling her it was just a game. The girl was found shot once in the chest from point-blank range. The mother, who was shot in the stomach, was 204863. It was called 9-11, found the father in his car listening to the radio. Several days before the murder, Smith looked behind you. I said, look behind you. Spell. This has led fans to theorize if Silent Hills and Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain take are place in the, in the same, same universe. universe. Yeah. Ghost Room, Call of Duty Finest. Yo, fucking Snake confirmed. S Snake needs to go to Raccoon City. Hour. Call of Duty Finest Hour. Sound familiar? Well, probably not because it was the third ever Call of Duty game released and it was released in 2004. I hope you're all older than this game. Just kidding, I'm aware you're all like five. That was a joke. According Damn. to a poll which 100,000 of you guys voted in, most of you are teenagers and young adults. Yay, you're just like me. Anyway, this is the third Call of Duty game, but was also the first console installment. The previous games were PC exclusives. Fun fact, by 2006, the PS2 version had sold 1.2 million copies and made $45 million in the US. Very successful to say the least. Anyway, in the mission Underground Passage, once going down the spiral staircase at the beginning, there's a large room with German soldiers in it, along with a passage to a larger tunnel on the right. Going into this larger area would spawn more enemies. On the right side of the tunnel, there's hmm. a door that appears to be unopenable. To open the door, throw two grenades at it, then go up to it and press the action button. Weird. You threw one grenade. Okay. Then go down a narrow tunnel, which enemies and your squad mates will not be able to answer. But if all the enemies are killed, then your squad mates will follow. At the end of the hallway is the ghostly room, which is built in a circular What the shape. fuck? There appears to be no ceiling. With like Harry Potter or fucking uh, Beauty and the Beast. Only candles floating in midair. And the room has a bunch of baby pictures hanging on the wall. Is that a Roomba? It's a fucking Roomba. Hell yeah. It's a Roomba with a tank skin. That's awesome. Keeping, keeping this secret. Ew. Why are there baby photos? And a toilet. It's like a prison for babies in this Roomba. Oh, what the fuck is under the stairs? This is easily the creepiest thing I've ever seen. There's also a huge rat under the stairs. What I the don't fuck? Know why. But the creepiest part is the baby's crib with a ghost kid sitting inside nope. of it. No. Nope. You press the action Terrible. button. Terrible. He'll walk a few feet away, pose as a soldier, then walk through the wall. That's terrible. That, that is the There's worst. There's also a chair with a Kaiser Bear explosive on it. The pictures are most likely the developer's families, but I couldn't find anything confirming this. Personally, I think this room is a reminder that all soldiers serving were innocent children too at one point. But that's just what I think. Kaiser Bear explosive, is that like the earliest stages of the monkey? Hey, there's a gun Pennywise there. Balloon, Far Cry 5. Far Cry 5, released in 2018, actually has a Pennywise, Pennywise Easter eggs in really? it. Pennywise being the clown from Stephen King's It. The first is on this location on the map and is a simple red balloon outside of a swampy tunnel. Oh, Coming back to Pennywise's iconic my red balloon God. and how he'd hide out in the sewers. The second Easter egg is in O'Hara's haunted house. After turning on the power, you'll see this mysterious figure watching you and then walk out of frame. Entering the haunted house, we get the average things you'd see, except with real corpses. I Heading do to the remember attic this. will lead you to yet another red balloon and pressing the action button on the payphone, you'll hear this. I think I missed that. There's also a note left on the couch which huh. reads, You have the fear of God. You need the fear of the devil. You need to fear it. You take a young person and take their body and mind. You use their empty corpses to find more young people whose bodies you can steal. 
No, 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 no. You will wish your mind was scooped out of your body because when it is through with your bodies, you won't want them anymore. It. Death of a Sports Team, Red Dead Redemption 2. In Red Dead Redemption 2, reading the newspaper, Blackwater Ledger, specifically number 69, you'll read that an entire athletic group has gone missing. Friends fear they have been foully dealt with. Members of the Blackwater Athletics Club are still missing and their friends and family are excited by the gravest fears. They were last seen leaving the north edge of the town for a group athletics run and although the most thorough search has been made for them, they cannot be found. Certain facts around their disappearance have given cause for suspicion. The affair has created a sensation in Blackwater and the surrounding community. They had departed on a run and had intended to return that same evening. Their friends are making a diligent search and police in neighboring areas mm. have been notified. At first, there were rumors that they had been kidnapped by Indians. However, this appears to be false as no tribes have engaged in theft of livestock or kidnapping in some years. The Blackwater athletics team were training for a competitive meet next month and were expected to take top honors in fencing, wrestling, and baseball. Then heading to this this point on the map, you'll find not one, not two, but all the bodies of the young men in a pile. Hey YouTube, this is a video game by the way. It's not real. Don't give me limited ads again. Ditto. Um, that's fucking crazy. Some members are missing limbs and others have bags over their heads. Why do it's they look like Team Rocket? Why are they wearing Team Rocket clothes? What the fuck? Oh, it's B. Hey YouTube, this is a video game by the way. It's not real. Don't give me limited ads again. Some members are missing limbs, and others have bags over their heads. It's pretty creepy. Ah, There's also a letter up. B made by those cut off limbs. The killer is most likely Edmund Lowry Jr. Due to the fact that both in the grave and in his basement, there's a letter B made by the limbs of the athletes. Hmm. Yeah, that, that checks out. All right, here I am wearing my next costume. What is it? Oh, that's right. The owner of the Earl brand, which is me, which is me. Look at this beautiful shirt. Oh my God, manufactured by Champion. Yeah, that's right. YouTuber with Champion. What's up? That's Not actually pretty biased, sick. Super comfortable shirt. Yeah. What do you expect? They're pretty, uh, they cost a lot to make. <laughs> so please buy some. But yeah, specifically, we want to talk about our new Halloween drop. Yes, make sure to go check out our website. Look at that, it's Earl in the back rooms. How cute is that? Our website is designed for Halloween for now, Apartment 3C, GTA Vice City. GTA Vice City, released in 2002, has a very cool Easter egg reference to the Scarface series. Very fitting as they both take place in the 1980s setting of Miami, Florida. Yeah. Apartment 3C is an apartment located south of a pay and spray in Ocean Beach. The building has a pink roof with a unique stun jump and parked sparrow in it. On its south side, there are stairways leading up to the apartment room. Entering oh. the building, a chainsaw is located in its bloody bathroom. Apartment 3C is a reference to the scene where Tony Montana and his colleague Angel walk into the Colombian trap in a hotel apartment with the same interior in which the hotel is called the Sunray Motel. Angel is then brutally dismembered and killed by a chainsaw in the bathroom as referenced by the apartment in Vice City. And also, this is my costume for this segment of the video. We oh, Shrek! Shrek. Alright, alright, alright. Let's get, let's get over to the next one. Whispered Names, Black and White 2. Black and White 2, released in 2005, is a game that combines real-time strategy and god elements. The player- I really thought he was about to say Pokemon Black and White 2 takes the role of a god called from the void to help villagers who invoke them. The player must also develop their nature according to their good or evil desires. Anyway, the creepy part about this game is that when your villagers die, the game whispers death. Like, damn, y'all really making me feel guilty now. But at late hours in the night, and I'm talking about real life night, not in the video game night. That's late hours up. in the night, sometimes you can hear the game whisper your real name. It does this by scanning your computer's name, which is most likely your real name. And uh, here are some examples of what that sounds like. David Aaron Wayne Ian That's terrible. I, I would uninstall the fucking game. Era, Cat, Amy, Naomi, what the fuck? What the fuck? What? I don't think the what? It's immediately less creepy when these two, these two potatoes show up on the screen. <laughs> Payday, the Heist, Witch Appearance. Payday, the Heist introduced a new map in 2012 Wait, like, exclusively from... for PC players. Well, not so new. The Witch from, like, uh, Left 4 Dead? 
Let's see, Ghostface, Super Mario, Half Life 2, Game Boy Camera, Metal Gear Solid, GTA 4, GTA 4, Assassin's Creed. I don't think I have to worry about any sort of spoilers playing nice. the Left 4 Dead series. The map was Mercy Hospital from the No Mercy map. Now that in itself isn't an easter egg, but there is one room in the map that contains a familiar figure. A crying woman, also known as the witch oh, in Left 4 Dead. Oh, that's crazy! She's one of the special zombies, and if you get too close to her, well, this happens. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and in payday, you get a little jump scare. Oh, Jesus. That's pretty cool. Ghostface, Super Mario 3D Land. It's no surprise that the Super Mario series is dedicated to children. But what is surprising is what can be found at the end of level 4-4. Avoiding the flagpole, standing in this corner, and waiting some time, you'll see this creepy ghost spawn in, and then spawn out. Weird. At first, players thought this was just a part of this level, but this ghost can actually be found in all ghost-related levels. Credit to SwankyBox here on YouTube as he actually installed an out-of-bounds camera and got closer to this weird being. It has nothing to do with the storyline, and also looks human and not cartoony. He was able to- mm, To me, it looks like a very, very, very basic rendering of the Mario Brothers face gather the sprite files and what we see is a figure that looks like a gray man wearing a darker gray shirt. The gaming community still has no answers as to who or why this thing exists. It's very interesting. It's like a realistic zombie shy smiles, guy. Half-Life 2. In Half-Life 2, the zombies have some pretty painful screams. <laughs> But reversed, they sound even more painful and we can actually make out what they're saying. God, help. Help me. God, help. Help me. It's horrible knowing what these civilians are actually pleading. That's creepy as fuck. By the way, Half-Life 2 is one of the best games of all time and changed the direction of video games. Just wanted to say that. I love- I, I should really play that VR mod. I love that game so much and was obsessed with it a couple years ago. Even have a sticker of it on my laptop. So yeah, that sticker means I'm a super fan. <laughs> Creepy Faces, Game Boy Camera. When it's least expected, you're elected, you're the star today. Smile, you're on Game Boy Camera. It's fun to look at yourself. The Game Boy Camera was released in 1998 and was a cool idea for the time. It was an attachable camera that took pictures with a whopping 160 by 144 resolution. To find this disturbing easter egg, you have to head to the shoot menu. There are many options here like shoot, items, magic, check, and run. Clicking run will what? result in a random picture of Africa that says you are now crossing the Jambo Nintendo equator. If you keep spamming this option, eventually you'll be met with a disturbing face with graffiti on it. The worst part is that it says, who are you running from? Yeah, what it's the you. fuck? What the, what the fuck? Even yeah, what the fuck is that about? The creepier is that when you try to back out from the image, the text will change to, don't be so silly. Super weird to include something like this in something that is marketed for children. No one knows who those people are in those images, but it's safe to say they're just Nintendo employees. Psychomantis. Is it? Metal that Gear was Solid. fucking weird. In Metal Gear Solid, there's an enemy named Psychomantis whose specialty is being psychic. When encountering him, he does something really cool and spooky, which is read your memory card to prove to you that he is psychic. The game was released on GameCube and PlayStation, so I'll show you guys some of his lines. Now I'll read more deeply into your soul. I see that you enjoy Nintendo games. So, you like adventure games? You seem to like The Legend of Zelda, don't Holy you? Holy shit! You like action games? Oh, so you've played Super Smash Bros. Melee before. Hmm, you have not saved very often. 
Heart of Happiness, GTA 4. In GTA 4, not only is the Statue of Happiness an incredibly creepy version of Hillary Clinton, that but funny. you're able to get inside of her. You know what? I'm not going to pause on that statement. Yes, you're able to yeah. get inside of her. This is like the helicopter pretty is needed, well known. As you got to jump out on the balcony at just the right time in order to gain access to what I'm about to show you. There's a funny sign outside that says no hidden content this way. Kind of like GTA San Andreas's. There are no Easter eggs up here. Go away, Easter egg. Yeah. Entering the non-solid door will lead you to a dark room with only a ladder in it. Reaching the top will lead you to the quote heart of Liberty Beating City. heart. Everyone always shot it. I don't you know go why. Back down from there, but then you're stranded. Only way out is to jump off the building or finding a way to die. In GTA 4's DLC, The Ballad of Gay Tony, it's possible for Luis to pass out from taking too many shots and wake up in this room with a parachute. Huh. Ghost Stroller, GTA 4. Underneath the Broker Duke's expressway, there's a small baby stroller sitting upright on the ground. Its placement could be a reference to there being no children in the game. Players claim that the stroller is haunted because it sometimes seems to move by itself, but this may be a result of a spawn glitch, which could possibly cause it to roll down the incline by itself. Nonetheless, it's still pretty creepy to include a stroller in a GTA game. And in case you're wondering, a dead... Can I say that? Can I say that? I'm, I'm gonna censor that. A dead can be found in GTA 5 on a website called acceptthechaos.com. Oh my god! Giant Squid, Assassin's Creed 2. If you're wondering why my voice sounds like that, <laughs> <laughs> it's because of this fucking fake ass goatee which I'm not gonna wear. What the fuck do they expect? Jesus, why is that? Why is it like that? Mojo, I'm recording a video, bro. I'm gonna get out. But yes, in case it wasn't <laughs> clear, I am Walter White for this part of the video. Oh, you guys have no idea what's going on behind the scenes of just removing clothes, putting it on. Please leave a like, dude. Please leave a like. I am a good YouTuber, you motherfucker. By the way, these are prescribed glasses. Did you guys know I have prescribed glasses? I've never said that in a video ever, not even on the second channel. This is how you guys find out, I guess. I never wear them. I think they look disgusting. Anyway, yeah, let's <laughs> talk about this giant squid in Assassin's Creed 2. A giant squid lurks within the assassin tomb. The tomb sits beneath the Venice church, and if the player makes Ezio look into the water for more than a minute, a cutscene will be triggered. The cutscene will reveal a giant squid swimming, Oh, that is rad. If, if you Ezio stay there longer, again, the yeah, the darts from the water and almost strikes the character. And if you look again, you get eaten, right? No, okay. That's kind of lame. Doom 2, John Romero. In Doom 2, which was released in 1994, players can find the head of video game director, John Romero, in a room that can be accessed without using cheats. <laughs> it appears in Doom 2's Map 30 Icon of Sin. Map 30 is Doom 2's final map. The head screams when damaged, and if hurt enough, the level will end. Go! Fuck you! Go! Go! Get off! Fuck yourself! Go! Why, go, why does flipping him off hurt him? Oh shit. The Hidden Message, Sonic CD. Sonic CD, released in 1993 for the Sega CD, is your average Sonic platformer, except that on the main menu, if you press down, 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 left, right, A, in that order, you'll be taken to a secret sound test screen where you can enter different combinations of numbers to hear sound effects and music from the game. Though this is probably just for developers. And 10 will lead you to a very horrifying screen. Dude, it's like the original troll face, but it's Sonic. What the hell is happening here? The background shows some weird, almost human version of Sonic. I personally think it looks like Waluigi, but the scariest parts are the lifeless eyes. The direct translation of the text is infinite fun, 
Sega Enterprises, image by Majin. Majin directly translates to devil, which adds a whole another level of discomfort. What the Though, fuck? Majin doesn't necessarily only mean devil. It just means a powerful supernatural being. But still, okay. why is it signed by Majin? Well, Masato Nishimura was a landscape designer for Sonic CD and his childhood nickname was Majin. It's a reference to himself. But the creepy music? I mean, that's a pretty fucking scary song, especially for a kid's game. Well, in the Japanese version, this is what that same exact screen sounds like. That is a completely different tone! It's like a Paul Abdul video. Yeah, a lot better, right? Both of those songs are actually the final boss music in each of the video games. And it seems like Majin wanted to use that epic, cool final boss music in the Japanese version. And when it got ported over to the US version, we get an even creepier product. When God, released yeah. here, the vibe was completely changed. But still, not gonna lie, even though we have more context to this situation, it's still a pretty fucking weird thing to do for a kid's game. A lot of these, uh, not uh, some of these on I this mean, list are kids games, and it's just like, why? I don't think a kid's gonna stumble across that Sonic one. Why, right, why the fuck did developers do that? No idea, weird, weird. Yeah, let's head on to the next one. Alien Figures, Super Mario Galaxy 2. In Shiverburn Galaxy, several shadowy figures with hollow eyes can I be do seen remember this. Yeah. in the background. They belong to the Galaxy's sky model, which simulates the sky by rendering at a fixed distance from the player. As a result, the figures can't be reached in-game and give the illusion of following Mario through the galaxy. The texture, named Hell Valley Sky Tree, depicts two unique figures. No one really knows what they are. Aliens, ghosts, creatures. Again, just like the Super Mario 3D Land Easter Egg, this is a very unique thing to add to a kid's game. Creepy Voice Jam Sessions. Jam Sessions is a guitar simulation game released in 2007 what for the, the fuck? DS. Though if you there was a guitar hero for the Nintendo DS? Did they like use the bottom? Or did it have like a plug-in? What the f- Or did it use the stylus? Let the A6 chord play out you hear a very creepy voice saying, forgive us. Oh, oh, that's that's worse than I even thought it was going to be. It's literally just you click on the notes. It's kind of weird. What the fuck? Well, it's yeah, that was fucking creepy. Actually, not that creepy. All it was was one of the recording engineers saying next in Japanese. They just forgot to trim it out. Uh, when oh, I was doing that's fucking funny. Oh, that's that's pretty funny. And every every English speaker thought it was forgive us because naturally you're gonna look for it in your language. On this one, I was like, this is the best one. And then I and then I like fully read through. I was like, oh, okay, still pretty creepy. <laughs> you know, the context. But uh, let's head over to the end of the video. All right, thank you guys so much. Oh man, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I love Easter eggs. I used to Easter egg hunt all the time. Like I remember doing the invisible ladders in Halo 2, sword cancel jumping to get out of like various maps or the invisible stairway uh, to heaven on that uh, one map. I can't remember the name of it. Most of these are Halo 2 and Halo 3. Um, that's where I did a lot of glitch hunting as a kid. I just really enjoyed it. Banshee super jumps, just stuff like that. A lot of Grand Theft Auto Easter eggs too. Like uh, I had Vice City stories on my PSP and I remember there's like various places you could go to, uh, like you could swim. There was this big ship right next to the city just sitting in the water. And if you went to the front of the ship and just swam straight into it, you would just go through it. And there was like a little sign that said like, no Easter eggs here or something goofy like that. And then in Saints Row 2, there was like a set number of islands you could go to and go from like a uh, little island pointing with an arrow to an arrow to an arrow. And it would eventually make a giant bunny with so bubbles on it pop up for no reason. I bet I could find that. You would, you would oftentimes end up so far off the map, you were like off the map. But, uh... You have to find one of these islands. And then I think I do remember your boat always disappearing or something like that happening. 
So you, you find one of these islands, and it's got an arrow. Now you have to just get on a boat and drive generally that way until you find another island. Oh. I don't always remember being able to see them. And I remember fucking up because if you hit Y, you don't warp to this shore. You warp to like the the main city island. So I used to fuck up every now and then and have to like start it all over. All the noises in this game, honestly, the nostalgia. I played the crap out of Saints Row 2, dude. Jeez, how many islands were there? Got you running all around town. Okay, so he's pretty far off map at this point. Yep, okay, here it is. It's telling you to look that way. And this this happened for no reason. Plug my Discord right quick. There's like no explanation for this uh, either. And I think, I think it even ended up showing up in Saints Row 3. Yeah, no problem. Jesus, this game. Hey, what's up guys? Mr. Thunderay here. And today we're checking out, you know, the giant bunny that rose from the sea across. Let's just see here. Okay, whatever. Why are you topless? We're gonna, as you can see here, it's in the. Gonna get it this time. Okay. Good lord. Uh. There it is. Yeah. It's funny because it doesn't fit in the fishing net at all. <laughs> Look at this thing, it's freaking massive. Yeah, so they caught it in Saints Row 3. Alright, I am going to get ready to switch things over. Thanks for watching, guys. Follow me on Twitch to join us live, like and subscribe, and I will catch you later.